A little over nine months ago now, the Indiana Pacers and Sacramento Kings made a trade that will likely be remembered for many years to come. If you don't remember, I'm referring to the deal involving DeMontis Sabonis and Tyrese Halliburton. It was pretty much the definition of trade deadline madness, and it left many wondering about the direction both teams were moving in. I think everyone questioned what the Sacramento Kings were doing, but for Indiana in particular, it was why they believed they were moving in a complete rebuild, with them later trading Malcolm Brogdon and actively shopping Buddy Heald and Miles Turner throughout the summer. They then added another piece to that puzzle by drafting Benedict Matherin, a shooting guard of Arizona with intriguing upside, and between him and Tyrese Halliburton, they were looked at to be a long-term project. However, that project appears to be well ahead of schedule, with Halliburton making a case to be an all-star, and Matherin making a case to be rookie of the year, and maybe even sixth man of the year as well. But what has allowed them to thrive so quickly in Indiana? And what are they doing that NBA teams cannot seem to figure out? We will talk about exactly that in today's video. Before we do that though, I would like to invite you to join our NBA Discord. If you enjoy having NBA discussions, being updated on NBA news, or chatting with others during live games, then I guarantee you would enjoy it. If you want to join, there will be a link for it in the video description down below. Without further ado though, let's get back to today's topic. And to begin, we need to discuss the jump taken by Tyrese Halliburton, who is currently having one of the better year 2 to year 3 leap forwards in recent memory. I mean, don't get me wrong, Halliburton was great in year number 2, but he has been absolutely incredible in year number 3, with him now being allowed to play to his full potential at point guard. And it's definitely the role he was meant to play. He is currently leading the entire league in assists per game, and is looking like the best young playmaker in the NBA. There are not many pure playmaking point guards left in the NBA. You of course have Chris Paul, but after that, a majority of point guards have now become combo guards with a scoring mindset. And while that is not to say that Halliburton cannot score, as that would definitely not be true, it does show how rare he is in today's NBA. Other than Darius Garland, he might be the only player under the age of 23 that I would trust to run my team's offense on every single play, and I really can't think of a better compliment. But the luxury with Halliburton is that he can both be your primary playmaker and be an off-ball scoring threat within your offense too. Now I do prefer to use him on the ball, but his offensive versatility is an absolute luxury to have. Between him and James Harden, they are the only two in the entire league to be averaging over 20 points and over 10 assists per game. Believe it or not, Halliburton is averaging even more points per game on pull-up jump shots compared to James Harden, with him currently averaging 9.2 points per game on pull-up jump shots, ranking him 10th in the entire league. Although, the most impressive part about all that would have to be his shooting efficiency. Halliburton is shooting over 48% from the field, and nearly 43% from 3. With the shooting volume that he's been taking, that kind of efficiency is very difficult to pull off, and the even crazier part is that their rookie Bandic Matherin is doing it too. Averaging roughly 20 points per game as a rookie is impressive on its own, but doing it while shooting over 45% from both the field and 3 point line is incredible. A rebuilding team will typically allow their high drafted rookie to chew through their struggles, but in the case of Benedict Matherin, he does not even need it. He has so far found a way to bypass that rookie wall, and instead, is shooting at a more efficient level than a majority of wing players around the league. In regard to his rookie class, Matherin is pretty much in a league of his own. He is the only rookie shooting above 40% from 3 in at least 4 attempts per game. If we are talking about offense, then Matherin can pretty much do it all. He can catch and shoot, knock down pull up jumpers, and even create plays for teammates. But my favorite part about him would have to be his play in the open court. Benedict Matherin is a marvel in transition. He is super quick and definitely plays above the rim. At the moment, he currently ranks 18th in the entire league in fast break points per game, and that is coming from a rookie playing under 30 minutes per game. 
I imagine we are going to see plenty of fast breaks led by Tyrese Halliburton and Benedict Matherin, with many of them ending in a highlight play. They are both incredible on offense already, and they are only 21 and 20 years old respectively. With how much room they have left to grow, it's not crazy to believe that they could become one of the best duos in the entire league. They appear to be a match made in heaven on offense, a pure point guard who has zero weaknesses on offense, and an uber-athletic shooting guard who is proving to be incredibly efficient. Allowing them time to simply build chemistry will do wonders for their team, and within a year or two, I guarantee that many more people will be talking about them. To wrap everything up here though, Tyrese Halliburton and Benedict Matherin could very well be the next up-and-coming duo in the NBA. They are insanely well-rounded for how young they are, and they are only going to get better. With all of that being said though, what do you guys think? Where do you rank Halliburton and Matherin among the young duos in today's NBA? Let me know your thoughts by commenting down below and we can talk about it there. That will do it for this video though. Big thank you to those of you who took the time to watch until the end of this video, and until the end of all of my videos in general. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and turn on notifications to get notified right away when I drop a new video. But as always, thank you for watching and have a great day.